If you don't find a way to earn passive income, then you will be stuck at work until the day that you die. Because as soon as you stop working, you're also going to stop earning a paycheck. So the key is to find some way to get recurring passive income, some way to make money while you sleep. Now, one way that you can do that is to start investing your money, maybe into the stock market. So in this video, we're going to explain how to invest in the stock market for beginners. Now, this video is geared for true beginners. Maybe you know that there is a stock market and you know that people make money in it. But other than that, you don't really know what it is. You don't know what stocks are. You don't know how to buy stocks or what stocks to buy. So this is going to be the video for you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben, and this channel is dedicated to all things personal finance related, helping you earn more, spend less, and invest the difference. So let's get straight to it. Let's jump into how you can start investing in the stock market. So essentially, the stock market is where all of the publicly traded companies can sell shares of their company. So essentially what that means is whoever started a particular company, they might be interested in selling a portion of that company so that they no longer own 100% of that company that they started. And they sell parts of their company by issuing shares of stock in that company. And these shares of stock can then be bought on the stock market. So essentially, when you are buying a share of stock in a particular company, you suddenly become a partial owner of that company. So if you buy stock in Apple, then you own a small portion of the overall company of Apple. And this ownership interest in a company gives you certain benefits. So for example, some companies pay out dividends, which is essentially all of the profit that a company makes in a year, they give some of that profit back to investors because you're the owners of the company, right? So the company made money and you own the company, so you deserve some of that money. So some companies pay out regular dividends to investors. Other companies might reinvest that money back into the company itself. Maybe they're still trying to grow and become even larger of a company. So if you're interested in buying stocks, the first place you have to go is you have to find a stock broker. These are the guys where you can actually go and buy and sell your stocks. So a lot of the common places that people go are some of the more popular stock brokers out there, places like Vanguard, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, some of the new apps, Robinhood or M1 Finance, etc. There's a lot of different places that you can go. But honestly, if you're brand new to investing, personally, I would recommend Robinhood simply because they make it super easy to actually start investing. Their user interface is very nice, clean, and user-friendly. So it's super easy if you've never used it before to immediately create an account and start trading and buying shares of stock. If you're interested, I've got the link down below where you can sign up and they'll actually give you a free share of stock simply for signing up. Now, once you've created an account with whatever brokerage firm that you're interested in going with, now you have to create some sort of an investing strategy. So realistically, there's two different main types of stock market investors. There's the active traders and there's more of the passive traders. So the active guys, they're constantly buying and selling at different companies. They might own a particular company for only a couple of days or maybe even a couple of hours before they turn around and sell it. So they're constantly hopping around trying to make a quick buck. Now, in theory, if you pick the right companies, you can make a lot of money by day trading. The problem is you gotta pick the right companies. Now, in the short term, Nobody knows what companies are going to go up or down in value. I don't care what kind of guru is trying to sell you a course or get you to, to buy their product or buy their book or buy their whatever. Nobody in the short term knows if a company is going to go up in value or down in value. Even great companies like Apple and Google and Facebook and all those others, even they go down in value on occasion. So in the short term, Nobody knows. So day trading can be very risky. In addition, the government sort of likes to discourage day trading a little bit. So any kind of profits that you make while you're day trading, they actually get taxed as ordinary income, which means that the tax bracket for this stuff is basically whatever tax bracket you are at 
based on your overall job. So if you earn $100,000 and you earn a lot of money and you are in a high tax bracket, then any income that you make by this active day trading is gonna be taxed at that same high level of income because you make a lot of money at your job. And in the tax world, this is referred to as short-term capital gains because you made a profit and you made that profit because you only held a company for a short period of time. Now, there's also something called long-term capital gains, which is what the government theoretically wants you to do because they incentivize you with a lower tax bracket. Now, according to the government, this happens if you own a stock for one year and one day. So basically anything over a year gets taxed differently. So if you own a company for over a year and then you later sell it for a profit, instead of your ordinary income tax level, they tax it at the long-term capital gains rate. And so if you don't make a ton of money on a yearly basis, you might actually pay zero dollars in taxes or you might pay 15%, or if you're super ridiculously wealthy, you might pay 20%. But either way, the tax brackets on this stuff is extremely low compared to the active day trading. So honestly, guys, my personal recommendation is don't bother with day trading. I think it's risky, and any kind of profits that you do get are taxed relatively high. So Try to ignore all of the gurus that are trying to sell you their book or their course or their, you know, sell you whatever it is. Day trading can be risky. Now, on the other hand, there's another type of investor called the passive investor. And these guys are people that buy a company and they basically just hold it for the long run. They really believe in this particular company. They think it's going to do fantastic. So they just buy it and they hold on to it. Maybe they hold on to it for a year, 10 years, 50 years, whatever the case may be, they generally hold on to a company for significantly longer than the active day traders that are constantly jumping in and out of different companies. And this tends to be significantly safer because like I said, in the short term, nobody knows if the price of a particular stock is gonna go up or down. There's just too many different variables. But in the long run, it's a little bit easier to pick individual winners. I think we can all agree that Google is gonna be around to stay. Google has their hands in pretty much everything tech related. They own Google itself, they own YouTube, they own a lot of different things. They're working on self-driving cars, they got everything going. So in the long run, Google is probably gonna to continue to earn more and more money. They're gonna become more profitable. So long-term investing, it's a little bit easier to pick long-term winners. So personally, I recommend investing for the long term, being a passive investor, just buy a good company that you believe in and own it for the long run. Now, even though you have decided that theoretically you want to own it for the long run, that can be a little bit challenging sometimes simply because emotions tend to get in the way. The stock price of a particular company fluctuates on a daily basis. So some days the stock price might be up and you might have made a little bit of money and some days it might be down and you lost some money. And some days it might be down significantly and you start to panic because your hard earned money is suddenly disappearing. But if that's the case, the absolute worst thing that you can do is panic and start acting emotionally and irrationally and just decide to sell your stock. Because that's the only way that you can guarantee to lose money is when you actually sell a stock for less than what you bought it for. Instead, it's key to take a deep breath and realize that this is only temporary. In the long run, you still believe in this company and in the long run, you believe that the price of this stock is gonna go up. So if that's the case, then it doesn't really matter what the stock price is doing in the short term because you had no plans on selling it anyway. Now, one of the problems of investing in the stock market is it means that you need to be able to pick individual winners and losers. What companies are gonna be profitable in the long run and which ones are gonna fail? Because obviously you only wanna buy companies that are gonna be profitable and succeed. But even that can be problematic because right now Facebook is doing extremely well. Before Facebook, there was MySpace and MySpace was doing pretty good too and then Facebook came out and just obliterated MySpace. Now at some point in the future, maybe today, tomorrow, or a hundred years from now, 
there's going to be another company that comes out that replaces Facebook and Facebook is going to suddenly stop being profitable. And so that becomes problematic because now which individual companies should we pick? Because what's doing fantastic today might not be doing fantastic a year from now or six months from now or 10 years from now. So how do we know what companies to buy and which ones to stay away from? Now there's a few ways that you can attempt to pick long-term winners. You can look at their financial statements. You can see what their quarterly and yearly revenues are and what their profit statements are and you know all their different financial statements that they publish. You can look at their management. You can see, you know, is the leadership sound or are they consistently making bad decisions? You can look at the overall market trend. Like, is this industry increasing overall or is it decreasing? For example, hotels, people aren't staying in hotels as much as they used to because now with the rise of places like Airbnb, people aren't really staying in hotels quite as much when they travel. And the same thing can be said with retail shopping centers. I mean, when I was growing up, when I was young, the cool place to be after work was you go down and hang out at the mall. But nowadays, like, very few people ever go to the mall. Like, we all just buy stuff off of Amazon. So you can attempt to look at these long-term trends as well as the individual financial statements for a company and attempt to pick long-term winners. But there is another way to pretty well guarantee that you're going to be successful in the long run. And the way this works is instead of buying individual companies and trying to pick individual winners and losers as far as which companies are going to be profitable, what if you could just buy a little tiny bit of every company? That way it didn't matter if one particular company was doing bad or one particular company was doing good. Overall, the average would be pretty good. So what if you could just buy into the average of the stock market. And this can be important because on average, the stock market tends to return roughly 10% a year. And that means that your money will double roughly every seven years if you just passively invest using this strategy. And this strategy is called investing in index funds. Now what index funds is, is they basically combine bits and pieces of a bunch of different companies and they bundle them all together and then you buy shares in this bundle. So by buying shares, by buying stock in this index fund, you're actually buying microscopic shares of hundreds or potentially thousands of different companies. So by investing in index funds and investing in hundreds or thousands of different companies, you can pretty well guarantee that your rates of return in the stock market are going to mimic the overall economy. So if the overall economy is going up, which over time it tends to do, then over time you will make money by investing in this index fund. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't you know, necessarily recommend individual stocks or anything like that. So obviously do your own research. So personally, I invest in two different stock tickers, stock ticker VOO, which is Vanguard's version of the S&P 500 index fund. The S&P 500 is essentially the 500 largest companies in America. So by buying shares in VOO, you're actually buying shares in the biggest 500 companies in the United States. The other index fund that I personally like is going to be VTI. Now VTI, it also includes all of those 500 companies that we previously talked about, but it also includes a lot of smaller companies. So investing in VTI actually gives you ownership in over 2,600 different companies, thousands of different companies you suddenly become a partial owner of once you buy stock in this particular index fund with the stock ticker VTI. Now some of these stocks, trade for $100 or $200 per share. So what if you don't have quite that much? That's okay because Robinhood offers what's called fractional shares. So you can actually buy a small portion of one share. So theoretically, you can start getting investing in these particular stocks or these index funds, oftentimes for as little as $1. So don't let the price scare you off thinking that you got to have $100 or $200 or however much it is to buy a whole share in a particular company.
So to recap my recommendations for somebody that's new, download Robinhood on your smartphone. It's super intuitive and just simply start investing money into index funds. That way you are very well diversified and just hold on to this stuff for the long run. You could literally buy either of these two index funds today and hold on to them for the next 50 years and never touch it. And you're pretty well guaranteed to make a nice profit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and as always, I'll see you all again next time.